Hello everyone, my name's Hallie Huber and I am so excited to host the Women in Tech Wit Talk episode four. I am here with special guest Violet Edwards, Madison County Commissioner of District Six. Good morning. Commissioner Edwards <laughs> is the, let's see, I believe Commissioner Edwards started your position mm -hmm. in 2020 I did. and you are the first black woman in the Madison County Commission mm -hmm. and we are so excited to have Miss <laughs> Edwards here I'm so thank excited you. thank you so much for having and me and we are here in the spark studio yes. yes so Commissioner Edwards how are you I'm doing great excited to meet you I know. excited to be back on UH, UAH campus excited to be in the studio I know I remember when it was being built. Oh so. my goodness. Yes. Well, we are so excited that you are here. Thank you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself at first? Okay, starting from the beginning. Yes. Well, once starting upon a time in 1976. No. <laughs> 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 no. So I am, yeah, Commissioner Violet Edwards. I have the honor and the privilege of representing the 6th District of Madison County. Yeah. And that includes all of North Huntsville, Northwest Huntsville, and the campus of UAH. Oh. It also sits in District 6, yes. Well, perfect. So I, I am home. Yes, very much at home. <laughs> um, I have, um, by training, I'm a journalist. Oh, really? Yes, I, I was in um, communications for 13 years. Oh my gosh. And I came to UH and got a degree in business. I got oh, an I MBA see. here. And uh, I've worked in nonprofit, I've worked in higher ed, I've worked um, just running a running a nonprofit and working with parents and children and the disenfranchised and did a little bit of everything that led me here. My and gosh, like, you've just done it all. Yes, 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 yes. So I was actually working at UAH when I decided to run for office. Oh, I see. And um, I won and I've been in that position now for uh, four years and I just recently, the primary just ended. Yes, and tell me about that. Yes, I received 75% of the vote. Hey, nice and job. And so now in November... Uh, I'll be on the ballot once again. Okay. Facing a libertarian. I um, represent the Democratic Party. Got you. And praying all goes well there, and I'll get four more years. Yes, fingers crossed. Yes, I absolutely. wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about your career in the public spotlight okay. and how it has shifted from the public spotlight in the journalism field into your public service as the Madison County District 6 Commissioner. Yes. So why don't you talk to me a little bit about your your career inspiration of why you wanted to get a degree in communication at mm -hmm. first, just the very beginnings of your inspiration. Uh, communications was something that I fell into. Okay. I, growing up, I've, I was always told that I had a nice voice. Oh, I see. And so I grew up in Birmingham listening to Dave Darnell on WENN. And I was, I was like, I want to be on radio. I want to be on television. And you know, those middle school, high school years, you kind of go through some things sometimes as a girl. Am I cute enough? Am I slim enough? Am I, you know, all of the, the little that. devils that, you know, that, that talk to you and tell you that you're not good enough. And so mm -hmm. when I went to school, I actually started out in education. Oh, I see. Because, again, I had strong writing skills. Started out in education and theater. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Fellow theater and communication yes, yes, girl yes, yes. right here. So, uh, but that was a lot of voice and diction classes, a lot of acting, a lot of projecting, a lot of just having a presence, kind of being your own vibe. Yeah. You know? And uh, I did my practicums where I, you go into the classroom, and I was in early childhood education, and after that semester, I realized that probably wasn't what I needed to do. <laughs> Understandable. Understandable. And so we went back, and we looked at the credits that I had and my strengths and what I really liked. And I still, the writing, the acting, the background, the the being in front of people, and it, it led toward communications. It led me into, into journalism. Oh, I see. And I really just excelled um, so much more than education, and that's how I ended up. I worked at a radio station in Tuscaloosa. I went to Birmingham. I worked in Jonesboro, Arkansas, um, communications. And journalism is what brought me to Huntsville. Oh, I see. And I did that for five years here. And then I got married and switched careers. <laughs> oh, I see. So, but that my inspiration there was just wanting to be able to tell a story. 
Oh, I see. I met a lot of interesting people. I uh, got to travel. It was a it was great for it was a great career for the twenties. <laughs> yeah, well, it sounds like it. It, it sounds was. like you've done it all. It, it was. So that was just a good way to tap into the community and hear people's story, to tell their stories, to stay neutral, and to really just connect with the communities that I lived in. Yeah. Um, and then I reached an age. Communications and journalism itself, television journalism, is not very family friendly. Oh, I see. And so once I met my husband and began a family, we shift careers. Yeah. And that shift led me into nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And I ran a local grassroots nonprofit here for five years. And I uh, that was fantastic. Again, just tapping into the community, getting to love on people. I got to play Santa Claus five years in a row. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> At Christmas Charities Year Round. Again, a local nonprofit grassroots. And that was absolutely fantastic. And then those kids again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I was a stay-at-home mom for three years. Oh, I see. And it was during that time that um, we just sat back and looked at what we wanted to do. And as I applied for jobs, a lot of the jobs wanted that second degree. Yeah. And I had bought a um, – we just started just dabbling in entrepreneurship. Yeah. And so I was just like, okay, we are, we're headed to UAH. Yeah. We're going to get that MBA. Might as well. And so I, I came yeah. on here. And oh, I, I see. stayed here for about five years. And so it's been a wonderful journey. Yeah. And everything that I did, every step of the way, led me to the position I am now, working with people, working with nonprofits, hearing the things in the community that's going on. Um, and I did not necessarily hear it all the time in my county government. Oh, I see. And you, we couldn't take the stance, well, you're not doing your job, and you're not doing this, and you're not doing that, when I know that I had the skill set to do it. Right. So I ran, and exactly. I've been able to tap into every career move has led me to this commission seat. Wow. So it seems like you've just been involved in the community yes. from such a young age, and yes. I can see how your passion for the community <laughs> has brought you to the position that you're in today, and Thank that's you. so great that you have the skill set that just all the different steps that yes. you took <laughs> just have equipped you with the person that you are today. Thank I you. love that. So why don't you talk to me a little bit about your career plans and like how they have changed, mm -hmm. like I guess how you navigated through those career changes because that's got to be quite difficult. It is. Yeah. So I caused a lot of stress to my parents. <laughs> <laughs> just don't know what I want to be when I grow up. And I'm still not there yet. I don't know? think we ever know. And exactly. I'm okay with that. But in my family background, my father worked, um, who got a, an accounting degree, exactly. and he worked for the FBI for 35 years. Dang. Exactly. So just the fact, uh, and he was, he was the first black um, field representative for the FBI in the state of Alabama. Oh, wow. So he did his thing, and he did it for 35 years. He got that degree, he got a job, a good job, good government job, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so the fact that, um, you know, at 26, when I was just like, yeah, I don't know if, you know, well, actually I was in my, in my late 20s, I don't know if this television thing is what I want to do, and everybody was in shock, and, and you're winning awards, and you're good at it, and what? you mean you don't want to do it you know um that is that that was that was something for my family and then when I got into nonprofit, my mom would study social so sociology and really? so working in nonprofit, that was her thing and she would be beside me and we were changing the world and I was just like ah, mom, I don't know if I want to do it she's like you're helping so many people yeah. but the lesson that I learned and the lesson that my family has come to realize about me is that it's okay to pivot yeah. You know, it, it is okay to pivot. Like, yeah. it is okay for change. I am one that I kind of, I, I move with whatever the spirit leads me to do. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability, and I'm going to do it as long as it speaks to me. Yeah. And that is that works for me. Now, if I had to spend a million dollars going to dentistry school, I would probably still be in, in dentistry. Right. But I did not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, but, but, and so I can remember, clearly remember, my senior year in high school, I was an exchange student, and I, I remember see. coming back and having decided college, and I remember crying because I was like, I don't know what I want to be. I don't know what I do, and I remember before I was even 20 thinking that I had to have my whole life planned. That was torture. Yeah. Um, so now when I speak to a lot of young people, I have a daughter that's 23, and she's feeling her way through also, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, it is okay. It is, it is all right. Just we'll, we'll figure this thing out and, and whatever is going to make you happy. And pay your bills, not mommy, but pay your bills. Exactly. Um, I, I, I am okay with it. So um, 
just being able to pivot, being able to be all right with, with, with failure and stand on the decision that I make and go into it, jump into it with both feet has kind of served me well. I love that. I love that your advice of it's okay to pivot because I feel like there is quite a bit of pressure to go ahead and figure out your life already at the ripe age of 18, just getting out of high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've got to know exactly what you want to do and you've got to stick with it until you die. (laughs) So I love that advice of it's okay to pivot. I know that that helps calm my nerves Mm -hmm. of trying to figure out what to do. And so I'm sure that our audience can relate to that and also calm their nerves as well. (laughs) And and my parents got over it. They're very proud of me now. (laughs) Exactly. And as they should be, as they should be. So why don't we talk a little bit about what it's like serving District 6 of Madison County? Tell me about that. Every day is different. So all of the districts in the county are different. Mm -hmm. Um, Some are rural. We have rural. We have urban. Uh, My district is a touchy-feely district. They like seeing their commissioner out at groundbreakings. They like seeing the commissioner out at at birthday parties and, you know, resolutions at funerals. And and, and they are just really hands-on government. Yeah, (laughs) and that's good for you because you love your community. So I enjoy it. Every day is something new. Every day is something different. Uh, I have found that... Um, even myself and in the district, the community that I serve, we have big dreams, big aspirations. And that's um, good. And it's a little bitty budget. Oh. So we get creative. Yeah. I've spent the last four years just really going out and trying to find resources for things that we need in the community. The budget is what the budget is. Right. I knew what the budget was when I ran for office. But we've had some success in going out and writing grants, um, coming up with, with partnerships that help the people and to help um, the the um universities and educational institutions that that we represent and so that has been the fun part like just going out and finding the money tapping into that development nonprofit experience that I gained early yeah and we've really been able to do some some great things so one of the biggest projects that I'm excited about right now is if you go down Pulaski Pike there is a wonderful awful ugly messy scene of mud and orange cones and I describe it like that it is an (laughs) awful beautiful wonderful ugly, you know, everything, everything (laughs) is, it is progress. And what we did, we went out and we found that grant money. We found, we worked with um, the Metropolitan Planning Organization and the Alabama Department of Transportation. And we were able to secure $1.2 million specifically for District 6, specifically for transportation, for sidewalks in that neighborhood. Wow, that is awesome. Exactly. And so sidewalks is not a big deal unless you don't have one. Right. Not a big deal unless you're trying to walk your dog down the middle of the street. Right. (laughs) Exactly. For that community, it is a big deal. So to be able to go out and find money and bring that back to the district, that is what gets me excited. Oh. That is just so. So that's going on right now. And that's a project that I can be like, teamwork, we did that. Yes. The community can celebrate. Um, so how can we duplicate that in communities across the district and across Madison County? And right. it really starts with you. Yeah. It starts with the people. Yeah. What is it that is important to you? Because that community itself, I don't live in, so I didn't notice it didn't have sidewalks. Right. All when about communication. Me, and I was just like, well, let's see what's out there. Yeah. And we were able to do that. So. That is what it's like serving District 6, really listening to the people and then going out and finding the resources. Um, the district itself has five, all five universities, college and universities in Madison County are in District 6. Wow. And so while other commissioners might talk about transportation and infrastructure, which is so very important, mm-hmm. District 6 is within the city of Huntsville, so a lot of my transportation and infrastructure I could tell you to call your city councilman. You know? Right. <laughs> we work right. around the city. Yeah. So we go out and try to find money for our um, for, for higher ed yeah. and for special projects, for our community garden, for um, buildings. So at Alabama A&M right now, um, with, with COVID, there are some yeah. ventilation projects. We found $400,000 for ventilation. Wow. So stuff like that. Yeah. It just really was, makes my job exciting. Oh, why we get up every day, cut on that computer and see what's out there. Oh, well, I love that. That is so inspiring, Thank all you. of the work that you've been doing so far. And I can't wait to see all the work <laughs> that you'll continue to do. Thank you. Yes. Well, why don't we move into 
let's see, you have currently made a lot of progress as the District 6 Commissioner for Madison County. I know that you just mentioned one of your next steps, but Mm -hmm. what is your next step since you have um, already um, won this? Yes. What's next? Yeah. So general election in November. Yes. And then after that, really, it's just nonstop. We are continuing to do our research, continuing to build relationships. Mm -hmm. Uh, The county, Madison County itself, has a lot of infrastructure projects that we're working on. Mm -hmm. And then filling um, uh, just initiatives. Yeah. Um, think things that were birthed out of District Six is countywide. We're dealing with our homelessness issue, mm-hmm. um, finding resources for our veterans. Just mm-hmm. projects. We started a project, Operation Green Light, that's just letting our veterans who are transitioning from um, from service to civilian life, letting them know the resources out there that we love them, that we care them. We put that green light on outside to let them know those resources are there, and we're thinking about them. Oh. So we're just finding just small ways to touch. Um, to touch people, yeah, and election years are always so kind of crazy. That's when we yeah. see the best of people and we see the worst of people. Mm-hmm. And so we're making sure that we shine the spotlight on the best of people right now. Oh, well, what it seems what like you are do. doing that though. Yeah, we we're working hard. Though. Yes, well, it seems like you're <laughs> doing that, and I completely understand yes. that it's quite a crazy time during it the election season, <laughs> but as we have seen with all of your great work so far, I'm confident in you and just everything that you've done. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> Why don't we move into the portion of community, mm-hmm. since we want to talk a bit about your uh, love for the community and your impact. What is community to you? That's a big one, I know. It is. That is huge. <laughs> We're getting kind of philosophical right now. Oh, community. Yes. Well, for me, it starts with family. Oh, I see. Yes, it, it does. So I told you that, you know, finding finding my man is what kept me here. <laughs> <laughs> and we are grateful for him for that. And I have three beautiful children. Oh. So that keeps me grounded. That that is base. That's where yeah. I start. Uh just my community. Uh family and faith is is my beginning. Yeah. And um community now is uh, just the people who call me daily and yeah. those invitations that I get. Um, very busy schedule to so much so that we now have an outreach coordinator for the district. So wow. when I can't go, this person goes. And it is um, just building that trust back. Yeah. Um, it is so easy to, and a lot of times politicians, we do it to ourselves. Yeah. Um, so the, the even the term politician is ugly now as it's like, no, I'm a public servant. You know? Right, <laughs> right. But just building that trust back. Um, if you even if you don't know what anybody else does to know that your county government or district six is thinking about you and have you in mind as we make decisions on on your tax pay yeah. dollars, on your on your on your dollars. So community to me is just, you know, when I answer that phone or I go to um the, the, the church visits or just the, the, the wonderful things that people think of me. I tell yeah. you, one of the biggest shocks that I got was shortly after I got in the office, um, that first Christmas card or that birthday card that came in the mail. Yeah. And you just like, somebody thought of me. Oh, oh. what? Oh, yeah, that one, that one you just sit back and it almost brought a tear to my eye just that, you know, it was a stranger, somebody that I did not know thought enough of me to, to put a birthday card in the mail. So that's that so sweet. is community. You know that, that <laughs> yeah, is community. That's getting me teary-eyed right now. <laughs> so I get them. And so, you know, and, and I'm just still so novice. I'm trying to write thank you cards. Oh, you right. sent me $5. I'm going to send you thank you. you know, right. hey, thank you for your $5 donation to my campaign. You know? Exactly. Uh, that is community. It's yeah. just that um, uh, uh, people do not have to be kind to you. They don't have to think about you. They don't have to um, include you in their plans or in their day. Mm-hmm. And they do. Right. That means a lot. That's a big deal. It is. Yeah, it's it a is. big deal for everybody. Mm-hmm. And so I completely understand. Mm-hmm. That's a great, a beautiful definition yeah, she, of community. She, she, my, my mother tells a story. Mm-hmm. So she still works with um, a ministry that donates food. It gives yeah. food. And uh, <laughs> she went into, the, she, she donated to this, this senior couple, this elderly couple. Mm-hmm. And they told her to bring it in. And she dropped it off right in the front, inside the front door. And on their mantle, they had pictures of their family up on the mantle. And they had a postcard that I had placed in the mail on the mantle. Now, you know, I had to go meet this family. 
That, that is, is community. They have my postcard. Yeah, a picture of me smiling. Vote Violet. <laughs> I love that, though. On the mantle. That and is so, community. That is. And so when I won, that was a big issue was with me becoming the first black woman to serve yeah. on the county commission. And the commission, you know, the county was 212 years old. Yeah. Into office. And um, as I campaigned, well, right after the election, you heard, oh, first black woman, black woman, black woman, black woman. And I was just like, yeah, I am qualified. Let's right. talk about that. You exactly. Know? But I had to step aside and get out, out of myself, get out of my feelings, because I realized it was not just about me. Right. That this was about community. Exactly. That there, you know, I was not the black first black woman to attempt this. Right. And that that representation matters and it was important. It does matter. So for the person who donated $5 to the campaign or for the person who worked on a campaign, previous campaigns that weren't successful or for people who just did not see themselves in county government, yeah. for them to see it, to just for me to be quiet and let them celebrate. Right. For me to stop saying, but I'm qualified. Stop focusing on me being a woman or my race. Right. No, that representation matters. So that was yeah. important to them. And so for that postcard of me smiling in my purple dress to be sitting on that lady's mantle, with the pictures of her family, that that is, that's the definition of community. Yeah, it's like... It's, yeah, it's just so good. Like, it's getting me teary-eyed. I'm, like, getting choked up thinking about that. That is yes. so sweet. Yes. Yes, yes. I love that, though. And it's like, again, like you said, family. And so you being up there on that mantle, too, yes. you're a part of the family. Yes, yes, yes. It very much is a family sort of oriented community. It is. And I love that. Yes. Okay, well, why don't we move into, let's see, what was your inspiration for getting into your current position as the District 6 Commissioner of Madison County? Yes, I'm volunteering. It started with service. I see. Um, I, from the Girl Scouts to, I uh, started a local chapter of an organization called Mocha Moms. Oh, okay. And that was for mothers, stay-at-home mothers who were raising our kids, who had degrees, whose family didn't quite understand how we had degrees and decided to stay home. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was a support group for mothers, um, working with just, diff- you know, the PTAs and different organizations that I was a part of. Yeah. That is what led me to it, just hearing what they had to talk about. I was... Um, I was president of NACH, the North Alabama Coalition for the Homeless. Yeah. And so seeing that in my community and the funding that was made available that I did not feel that we were going after as, right. a, as a community, as a government, you know, nonprofits were, were all applying for that same batch of money, but there was other money out there. Yeah. Um, that is what led me here. It's just those conversations that I was hearing in my daily walk in service. Yeah. And just... Um, broadening my foot my footprint yeah. and there was money that we go after as a government that as a small nonprofit uh, executive director that I did not have access to yeah um, so knowing that knowing that knowing that if somebody needed to be on the other side picking up the telephone answering those calls going out and helping those smaller people smaller agencies um, serve the community that's what led me to do it yeah, your passion for the community really does shine through thank in that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I remember I was, like I said, I was here on campus, and um, President Alton Kirk was the president of UH at the time, mm-hmm. and his days were counting down, and I remember what that was like one of the last things that he did before he left, because I was just like, get it on this desk, please. I, You know, you have to, I had to make sure that he knew and that the university knew that I was running. Yeah. And I was just like, I, th- I think this is next for me. Yeah. And then shortly afterwards, COVID hit. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right after the primary. Mm. Right after, yeah, right right after the primary COVID yeah. hit. So the primary was on March 3rd. Oh, my then gosh. Then the world shut down the next week. Oh, my gosh. Well, tell me about that then that as, was, as you're rolling so as that, the commissioner in that. That was, um, so, you know, there's really, you have some kind, some training, some when you're running for office, you know, this is what you do. This is what people have found success in. Yeah. None of that mattered. Oh, When no. COVID hit. You had to get really creative. You really did. And that is really where social media and technology really pay, played a huge part. Because yeah. none of us were, were out. Yeah. And um, even putting things in the mail. Who was even checking mail at the time? Like, we right. Like, nothing. So we really relied heavily on social media. Um, I, I still... 
You know, there were a lot of students that were former students that, that I had to call on their expertise. Yeah. Um, and just really get creative. And I look back at some of those videos from 2020, and I'm like, oh, can't we delete that from the internet? What was I thinking? I had COVID <laughs> hair. Oh, no. COVID no makeup. It was know. a different it time was, we had. Oh, oh my, my gosh. Goodness. It was something else. All the videos from my back porch, you know, no lights, no. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but it was effective, you know. Honestly, COVID time does not count. <laughs> it does not count. I want to just <laughs> scrub. But that that's who we are. That's what we were at that time. Exactly. And, you know, even campaigning, you can't really knock on doors and hand them literature. And I can remember driving right. around and people would have, like, back, um, backyard barbecues. Yeah. And I would, like, pull up and be on the other side of the fence. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Yes, I'm Violet. <laughs> From a distance. From a distance. Vote for me. Just that everything that was in a book or everything that you Googled about running a campaign, none of it. I remember thinking, looking at some of the things that they did back in the past and saying, yeah. oh, this is 2020. I'm never going to do that. Like, I did not necessarily, I didn't necessarily want to stand on the corner and, and wave the little sign. <laughs> I said, I would never. We have social media now. I'm right. emailing. I am COVID hit. And there I was. <laughs> had know? to get creative. Yeah, on their way to the grocery store. And there I am. You know, we had a little <laughs> rage. You know, and that was actually, like, fun. You know, the, the whole caravan. And you just driving through neighborhoods and honking horns. And everybody's outside. <laughs> right. And so we held up the signs and passed out water. And it was just great. But yeah. you just can't never see. You can never say what you absolutely will not do or what you won't do. And, and you can have a strategy. Yeah. But, again, you got to be able to pivot. <laughs> exactly. I was about to say, like you were saying earlier, you got to pivot. That's our life lesson here today. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm serious. I went back and looked at those videos. I was like, who let me (laughs) on the internet (laughs) looking like this? I understand. (laughs) I understand. COVID time does not count. Oh, but hey, that's what made me so. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And here you are. Yes, yes. And you're stronger for it. Yes. 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 Okay. Well, why don't we move into how has your community Mm -hmm. shaped you? That's a big one, too. Oh, that is. I know. We're getting really philosophical today in the morning. (laughs) Oh, real early this morning. I know. I'm sorry. (laughs) Okay. So how has community shaped me? Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, I think. My last story, like yeah, I said, like just just getting out there and hearing what people want, what they want from me, what they want from government. Yeah, um, it is very important. Also, though, to know, you know, I laugh and say there's some things that you won't do, and and, and life will happen. Mm-hmm. But in sitting down, there really are some things about me, my character, my morals, my faith that I absolutely will not do. Right, like that's not you, even in. You think about just running elections in Alabama. Alabama has been known to have some very nasty campaigns, very nasty elections. Mm -hmm. Um, So being part of the community and knowing that the uh, people that um, were my competition, we still going to see each other in the the parking lot at the grocery store. Yeah. You know, we still might be on the same row of a church at any moment. Yeah. And so um, knowing that my community will not tolerate and should not tolerate that kind of foolishness right. really helps shape. Um, you know, there were there are times that, you know, emotions can get heated mm-hmm. and you want to say some things and you want to write some things and I'm going to do this, 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 and this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but my mom is still alive and she will very much put you in her in your place. Oh, me too. And so I I'm understand. Just, <laughs> just thinking about how you want to carry yourself to represent your family. Yeah. Um, represent your um, in, in representing your community, and I think my community is very clear on the type of representation they want, right. um, the type of person they want um, speaking on their behalf and carrying that message. Yeah. And I think that that has also helped shape, you know, has, has also helped shape me. Yeah, so mm-hmm. you've shaped the community, and the community has shaped you. Absolutely, it's a beautiful Absolutely. relationship. Every now and then, I have to. I, I'll grab my tongue, so <laughs> sister, sister such and such would not appreciate me saying that. Exactly, <laughs> my mother would not appreciate me saying that. Not gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> and they would catch me in the church parking lot telling me not to make that face again. 
So understandable, <laughs> understandable. Oh my goodness, I love it. Well, let's see. How has your perspective of community changed in your career? Oh, my perspective of it. It has it has grown. Yeah. Um, we all live in our bubbles. Yeah. It's very easy to live in our bubble and think that where we're living is reality. Yeah. Um, it is not. Mm. Just the reality is is that we all live in bubbles. Mm -hmm. And so um, in this position, getting outside of mine, thinking that things that I still have my priorities and things that are important to me. Yeah. um, But in getting to know people and know the community better, Mm -hmm. um, realizing that my top priorities might not have been everybody's top priorities. My priorities were important or I would not have won the election. Right. Like people saying this is important. But yeah. there are other things, other facets of the community that I did not know about and that I have to be open minded about mm-hmm. and realize what is affecting and what, you know, just the yeah. impact that different different things um, are, are having in the different neighborhoods that I, rep- that I represent. Yeah. And so that has really just outside of that bubble and yeah. just. You know, uh, you, you hear people talking, it's this, 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 and this, and I'm thinking, I can come up with about 10 different people just sitting here talking to you that thinks differently. Yeah. You know, that has a different respect, perspective, that has gone through something different than what you were saying. So what you were saying, it is important. Right. However, mm-hmm. there is a different uh, train of thought out there. Yeah. And, and let's, let's be empathetic. Yes, exactly. Yes. I think empathy is a huge, mm-hmm. huge deal, Absolutely. especially when trying to try to relate to your community mm-hmm. and just being able to have that sort of empathetic mindset Absolutely. is very important. Mm-hmm. I love that. Thank you. Why don't we talk into your community involvement outside of your work? I know you were talking about mm-hmm. that you've had experience volunteering mm-hmm. and stuff. I guess, tell me a little bit about that, about well, your um, just volunteer work and community work. Just well, let me see. things outside of work right now. I <laughs> Or just even in the past, too, okay. you can talk about just community involvement, uh, yeah. like volunteer work, like you were talking about gotcha. in general, like your, your mocha moms, mm-hmm. your that sort of stuff. Gotcha. Well, where I am at this stage in my mm-hmm. life, I am in a perpetual car line. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. Because I have a, I have a uh, two middle schoolers. Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> both very active in everything. Yeah. So when I'm not at work, you can always find me uh, in a car line waiting or dropping <laughs> off. Yeah. I am at a basketball game. I'm at a football game. I am at a band concert. I'm at an orchestra concert. I'm at a play. I am at. They keep me very, very, <laughs> very, very busy. And all of that is part of work. Exactly. You know, because they go to school in the district and so I consider that all kind of one and the same but I remember doing an interview I showed up at an event Mm -hmm. and um, I was being introduced they were like this is Commissioner Edwards this is Commissioner Edwards and she does this 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 and this and the young lady behind the camera said oh hey that's Vivica's mom and somebody (laughs) stopped us just like and she's Vivica's mom (laughs) Had to add that little extra bit. Add that too, because you can call me commissioner and say I did this, 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 and this. But at the end of the day, I'm Elijah's Miles and Vivica's mom. Exactly. And that is how half the district recognizes me. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I guess how do you navigate that work life balance then? <laughs> there really is not a balance for me. <laughs> It's a day by day. It is. It's, it's all kind of one and the same. And um, when I ran for office mm-hmm. uh, the first time, my youngest was in the second grade. Oh, I see. That campaign was the longest campaign ever, especially with COVID, because dates got pushed back. Mm-hmm. And so the campaign itself was a good 12, 13 months. It was ridiculously long. Oh um, and so, you know, in second grade, first grade, when he started, I was mom. Yeah. Mom, mommy, mom, mother, you know, mom. Mm-hmm. And he started introducing me as Vote Violet. Like, I was like, baby, my first name is not Vote <laughs> It's not Vote Violet. <laughs> I love that. So that there was, there is, there is, you know, no ballots. It's a little grassroots. We're running a campaign from the back porch. Um, all, it was always a campaign t shirt clean. So wear that to school, you know. <laughs> I love so, it. My mom's Vote Violet. My mom is Vote Violet. I was like, okay, we have to reprogram a child here. Exactly. <laughs> so. <laughs> Work-life balance. 
<laughs> so, but the, the the family got involved, and so even now, you know, in, in working with the schools, and a lot of that still, again, it kind of shapes, it, it shapes how I. How, how I run the office, it shapes how I run the district. Uh, my staff have families. Yeah. I get it. I understand. Um, it is, I know that with all of us having kids, there might be a little less work done during spring break. I get it. Understandable. You know? Understood. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but balance itself, it, we, we, we walk a fine line. Everybody mm-hmm. knows what's most important. Now, what... Um, it's also it was just community education. Like I said, I get a lot of invitations. Yeah. And my predecessors did a lot of community events also. Mm. And the ones that were important to them was, was, was their thing. Yeah. It might not necessarily be at the top of my list. Right. And I can't make it to all of them. So I won't make it to everything, but I have not missed a football, basketball, theater, orchestra performance because yeah. that's at the top of my list. And so... Right. Um, just for the community to understand that I'm not ignoring you and I thank you, but you know my baby is playing the violin tonight, so that's why I'm that's where I'm going to be. Yeah, and this is a season as well, you know. So as my uh, my career grows, as they grow, things shape sh- uh, shape and shift, and we just all do this together. I love that, yes. and I know that makes a huge difference in just your kids and stuff mm-hmm. being able to be present. Yes. That is something that is. Very, very important. Yes. And just to through seeing you doing that, your community knows that you have that same want to yes. be present as well. Mm-hmm. I love that. And my, my youngest is my oldest is my oldest son is into it. You might not know what my husband looks like, but my uh, my oldest son is always <laughs> right there. Where we roll is where we go, mama. The baby yeah, you can take it or leave it. <laughs> but my middle child is there. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's there, yes. Oh, yes, my yes, goodness. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Well, why don't we talk about your, let's see, how you believe that your previous roles have helped shape you into the community-oriented person that you are today. Mm-hmm. I know that you had that degree in public relations, mm-hmm. or no, I believe it was journalism. journalism. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 mm-hmm. journalism. Mm-hmm. Yes, I guess how that has prepared you it, it has all of it has mm-hmm. um the 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 being able to connect with the community to write you know a lot of people when I ran had you know they trusted me mm-hmm. you know they 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 allowed me in their homes for several years to bring them new stories yeah and so that trust and that relationship was already there um people knew me from the service, from raising money, from running the nonprofit, from, and then, you know, here on campus, people already knew me in, in raising money for scholarships, yeah. um, in helping young people come out of their shells, um, in training those butterflies to be able to make presentations. Yeah. All of that is, is, is what I do. That's like Commission 1.0. Oh, really? 2.0. 2, 2. Yeah. Oh, I see. All of it is. And it also has brought um, just good diversity to the commission as a whole because yeah. we all come from different backgrounds. We have, you know, former volunteer firefighters. We have a, a business owner. We have a former two former teachers. We have oh, a wow. former admin. Yeah. And so everybody's different walk of life it is so important. You don't mm-hmm. want to have one mind, one background, one one thought process right. sitting on any body, right? On any you know group of of um, decision makers. Yeah. And so mine is is the public re- relations, and there have been things. I'm just like I hear what you're saying, but have we thought about the perception? Yes. You know, have we yeah. thought about? Just what this looks like, how we're going to roll this out. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. And, and while no one else may think of like that, it's important that I do. Yeah. And I embrace that. So it might be a little different, you know. Mm-hmm. But those soft skills are important. Yeah. Are, are very important. And I think that you're seeing um, uh, more attention paid to them now. Mm-hmm. Uh, writing. Now, I can go on a whole nother rant about AI and writing. But it's <laughs> still the importance of, take, of, yeah, of, a long time. <laughs> of being able to write just that, that, that critical thinking and mm-hmm. being able to have those one-on-one interactions, being able to sell yourself, sell your thought, 
it's just still so important. And I think that that plays a critical role in what I do today. Yeah, very much so. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you have that perspective. And like you were saying, that having those different perspectives is the key to making sure there's representation Mm -hmm. and making progress. Right. I love that. I love that. Why don't, excuse me, why don't we talk about the ways that somebody can make a difference as a citizen for their community, the steps that somebody could take? Because it does start with the citizens. It does, it does. And it does not, you know, it does not mean everybody listening should go run for office. This is not for everyone, but everyone (laughs) can absolutely make a difference. So my Facebook post this morning, if I can remember, is my new mantra. Oh, I see. Tell uh, me about it. I heard Poet Laureate Hank Stewart this this weekend. Okay. And he said, it's our time. It is our, what is it? It's, It's our time. Okay. It is our he said something else. Okay. But if, but if we do not do our part, it's our fault. Ooh. It's our time. It's our space. And if we don't do our part, it's our fault. That's what it's, it's something. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Much. I get what so you I'm mean. I'm just yeah. like, now it's time. Now right. it's time to get up and do something. And if we don't, then so be it. You did it. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's your fault. And um, that is... I forgot my question, trying to remember what, oh, no. what Hank said. What was I supposed to be talking about? Oh, That um, comes with age, too. Yes, let's see. Uh, steps that somebody can That's take. It. Yes. It's your time. There we go. There we go. It's your and time. If you don't get up and start moving, it's your fault. <laughs> you cannot complain. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, again, that's what led me to office. Like, I'm not yeah. blaming any of you for not taking care of anything that's important to me. When if it's important to me and I have the skill set to spread my message and to do something, I should be doing it. Yeah. So there is something that is important to each and every listener here. Yes. Um, something that you um, that that speaks to you right now. Something that you like change. Something that you want to do. Something that you can improve upon. Yeah. And when are you going to do it? Yeah. Like when when are you going to get up and, and get this thing going? Mm-hmm. When, when? Yeah, because procrastination, and we don't like get that. Get you nowhere, and you know, and, and then we're going to sit back and we're going to complain. Exactly. So, a vicious cycle. It, uh, very ugly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Everything. <laughs> So I just, again, just encouraging everyone, whatever is, is uh, to, to just get up and get moving. Yeah. That there is so much work to be, do- be done. Um, I came into office knowing nothing about or very little about environmental issues. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I've met several people and that is just so very important to them. Yeah. And it's not my place to be like, oh, don't nobody care about that. We're going to care. We care about, we care about saving the whales this week and not you know, agriculture, <laughs> you know, no, whatever it is that is speaking to you. Yeah. That's what you do. Exactly. And, and do it. Jump in. Yeah. That's exactly. a good perspective. We all have our own passions and we whatnot. Do. The time we is do. now. We do. But, and that's what I, I will say that that mm-hmm. is frustrating to see um, people with passion yeah. or with people who are living in their bubbles yeah. for them to pit what's important to them. Uh, against somebody else's um and so i uh, for example you know some people are um speak up and are advocates for foster foster kids yeah some are advocates for pets yeah animals and and, and shelters some are advocates for the homeless yeah some are into agriculture and save the trees right those four don't fight against each other. Right. It's all to work together. And, 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 and if somebody gets a blessing this month, a grant, a um, million dollar donation, then let's celebrate them because yours is coming. You keep exactly. on doing your work. Right. You keep on doing what's important to you and shining a light on your issue. Mm-hmm. And, and let's not... Uh, that that is a peeve of mine. Right, that's it's where that you, empathy comes yeah, involved. Yeah, you did such and such for such and such, but this was more important, and this was no, right? No, this was important to somebody, and this was their time. Exactly. This was their blessing. Exactly. You keep working, and yours was coming. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's where that empathy, like Absolutely. you said, comes in, and Absolutely. that's important. Absolutely. Those issues are important. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Why don't we talk about? advice that you have for young women that are wanting to get in those leadership roles in their community and want to try to find a place to start? Ooh, it, it just goes back to just do it. Yeah. Um, I, that first term, mm-hmm. a lot of failures. 
Mm. And, and and I would say it out loud. It's you're a fail fall. What is it? Fail fast, fall oh, yeah. fast. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what um, what I've learned is, you know, any of my failures, I was moving forward. Yeah, we're trying something different. We're trying something new. We are moving. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, you know, just just tapping into courage. Um, some of the negativity I realized early on that was from people that I didn't even like or respect. Mm. So why do their opinions even matter? Right. Um, just, just staying grounded and to just do it. Yeah. You know, I still go into a lot of rooms where I am, where, where you know, women are the minority. Yeah. A lot of rooms. Mm. Even in this position in running, uh, my intelligence was questioned. It was just basic female stuff, you know. What about her family with them kids? And is she smart enough? Does she know, even know what a commissioner does? Um, can I drive a tractor? What? I was like, I cannot drive a tractor. I'll answer that for you. But I can budget, and I know people, so I will hire a great person <laughs> to, hi- to, to drive, drive, drive tra- that tractor, <laughs> and we'll have a little money in the budget left over, you know. So those are the type of answers that I have to give. Like, yeah. Can I drive a tractor? No, I, I don't speak asphalt. <laughs> but I can work that budget, and I can find a very qualified person. <laughs> Who knows all about asphalt that can help us with this room, you know, and I'm learning along the way. But yeah. this was stuff that, you know, I didn't hear asked of the men. And right. I said, we all have different backgrounds. So if you didn't ask the, the the teacher, if he knew about asphalt, why are you asking me or what a commission does? So it was that type of things that yeah. those type of things that you can't uh, you take offense to. And mm-hmm. you just have to have an answer for and you have to stand up for yourself and. Sometimes people do it and don't even realize they're doing it, you know. Mm. Um, but you just go for it. Yeah. You know, it, we're not we're not going to we're not not going to do it because someone said that we couldn't or because they've never seen you do it before, mm-hmm. and the, you know you break the mold or yeah. that representation does matter. So you be the first. Yeah. And so it'll make it that much easier for the next. You yeah. know. Yeah. And. So I just say go for it. I, yeah. I there, there are some things that I don't even harp on anymore. So me mm-hmm. being the only woman, I'm just like, okay, let's do this. Yeah. Um, please have some place where I can hang my purse. Exactly. <laughs> 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 and let, let, let's get this done. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's do. Yeah, I love it. Let's see. Let's uh, talk about um, how someone can be able to find their community if they are trying to figure out where they fit in their community. How can somebody find their community? Um, just stop and listening. And this sounds so cliche. Okay. But just listening to themselves. Ooh. Listening. All of us have something in us. We all, we all have a passion. We all yeah. have a, a reason for getting up. We all have something that makes us smile, makes us laugh, makes us dance, makes us sing. We all have that something. Yeah. Um, and, Look, it's okay if it changes every 10 years, but we all have yeah. that, that, that. You got to pivot. It. And that's where you find your community and what is speaking to you at the time. Like I said, for three for three years, I was a stay-at-home mom. Mm-hmm. And so my community at that time was other stay-at-home moms and um, really deep into education, types of education, how to educate, you know, classical Montessori. Just that was my thing for three years, you know, health and nutrition and growing healthy, brilliant kids. Yes. <laughs> That's what was speaking to me at the time. Yes. That was the community that I'm tapped into. Not necessarily my community anymore that my, you know, my kids are, are, are older. Yeah. But whatever you are feeling at that time, at that moment, I, I go with it. And you're not flaky because it's not your thing anymore. Right. But that is where you find your, your peace. That's where you find, you know, if it's a group of ladies sitting around drinking coffee once a month, you know, talking about hair care products that, you know, yeah. <laughs> if that's your thing right now, then then that's your thing. That's your community. We're not, uh, none of us are out here by ourselves. Right. There's somebody. Um, even with the, the differences that I see on the commission, we are more alike than we are different. Mm-hmm. Even though some of our district differences are very stark, mm-hmm. we are absolutely more alike than we are different. And tapping into that, those 
those um, things that we find a common ground in. And I think that that's how you find your community. What is speaking the loudest to you right now and finding somebody that falls in line, that like-mindedness um, will bring you peace. I love that. I love the um, just finding your passion and mm-hmm. being able able to pivot, like mm-hmm. you were saying. you got to be able to Ooh, sorry, <laughs> you got to be able to pivot. Look, your thing right now, you like, Violet, I don't want to know right now, but go sit at the park. <laughs> there are people at the there park. Are, what you talking about? Yeah. Right, go yeah. find your people sitting at the park. Exactly. Yo, yo, your people might be feeding the ducks right now. Exactly. That's your people. That might be my community. You know? <laughs> that has been my people. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And that is okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I love that. Well, that is all the questions that I have. Okay. Do you have anything else that you would like to no, talk about? No, it's been an honor. Yes, it's been uh, an honor to sit as well. Speak with you. Yes, and to be back here, like I said, it's like it's like coming home. So now I'm going to drive around campus and oh, I remember when that was built. Oh, I remember when I fell off that curb. <laughs> <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But well, we are so honored that you are here, Commissioner Edwards. Thank you, Thank you so me. much. Thank you. And Thank how you. can people reach out to you if they have any uh, questions or uh, how can they just reach out to you? Okay. Everything. Or stay connected. Yep. Everything is online. I would say Google me, but you might find those 2020 hair days. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> don't, don't Google me. No. <laughs> Let those stay where they are. <laughs> no, uh, Edwards at madisoncountyal.gov is how you can email me. Um, but And Madison County Government, you can Google that. You can find me there within the Madison County Government. Uh, phone number 256-532-1505 is how you can reach me at my office. Of course, that email is, is one-on-one. It's me. I check my email. Yeah. Um, and, and I answer email. Uh, that is the, the best way. And... Just looking forward to new ideas and and new thoughts and getting to know my community even better. Well, perfect. Thank you so much, Commissioner Edwards, and I wish you the best of luck. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning in to our fourth episode of Women in Tech Wit Talks, and stay tuned for the next episode. Bye-bye.